is Greece uh, becoming a serial defaulter? Still to be seen. Uh, he can join a group of quite a few that have become serial defaulters, like Argentina, Ecuador, but the reality is still uncertain. What is a fact is I, I personally think it's quite difficult to be able to service the, the debt because and the main problem that Greece is facing now is that most of that debt is official sector. So <clears throat> technically, you cannot default on that. What will happen? I don't know. Unless they pull a rabbit out of a hat, uh, they will do the usual rescheduling, extending maturity and reducing interest, which indirectly is a net present value reduction. But uh, as things stand, I doubt that you will become a serial defaulter because you don't have you don't have the opportunity, but it's all official sector, but it's still to be seen. And from your presentation, the general picture was uh, that there is no hope in a way in trying, and there's no, it makes no sense for uh, uh, for Europe in general, for the European Union in particular, to, to attempt to save Greece. Um, so let's try to look through this uh, and go through this counterfactual of, of, of Greece actually leaving the Euro. What do you think the consequences would be uh, even the short-term consequences uh, of the day after for Greece and for Europe. Okay, let me start by saying that apparently I conveyed the wrong message because that was not the message of my presentation, so I clearly have not been... That's it's probably something about my understanding of, of <laughs> learned economics and your presentation. <laughs> Basically, in my presentation, the message that I was trying to put forward is the fact that uh, there are ser very serious obstacles that we need to overcome. I'm not saying that Greece should be out of the EU. I'm not saying that the EU should collapse. Um, that's not my message. My message is that uh, it's a great initiative, I mean the EU, uh, and therefore there are work that needs to be done. Very serious work, because as I was stressing that we are living within an EMU with a very strong E, but a very weak U. So we need to work more in the union of the European Union. And for that, we need to create some overcome some difficulties which usually are related to sovereignty of the different states. And the, the biggest example right now, which the panel was about, is the banking union. And basically, how do we create this banking union? What are the tools that we have for the banking union? And, and therefore, that's when we start clashing with sovereignty. Some member states that want that wants this union to go towards one direction, others to, that want this union to go in a different direction. And, and that's the, the main message I was trying to convey. If you want, we can also talk about the day after in the event of. No, in, in, no, 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 no need for that. Uh, so let me then try to ask something that relates, I hope, more closely to the to the message you try to convey in the presentation. There is a whole debate and literature, both academic and now also coming in the press in the U.S., about varieties of capitalism. In your presentation, I got the impression that we had something like varieties of crisis. Um, and you try to sort of describe the differences and the different aspects, the important differences between uh, cases that we tend to put under the same basket. Um, for what, what, would you, what would be the main uh, characteristics that sort of uh, determine which of the crisis is going to be more easily um, uh, recovered or can be more easily uh, sort of dealt with. Okay, on, on this point, uh, let me let me clarify a couple of things and then uh, answer the, uh, your question directly. I, it's simpler, your, your question is uh, this one, the answer is very simple because I, I personally think it's how and when you address the issue, but let me, let's start building on that. There are Crisis, they have different origins. Then when the crisis has unraveled, more or less, it would be the same, but the, re the, the key issue would be the severity of the crisis. So the origins are different, then the developing of the crisis and the crisis itself, more or less, all, uh, all have many commonalities, many common elements. Of course, there are no two crises that are exactly alike, but there are the, cons the elements in the building, uh, the crisis itself, there are many commonalities. Going to your actual question, which is <clears throat> how to deal with the crisis, etc., I think that there are two things that are very important. One is how fast you deal with it, basically how, you, how fast you face it, because one of the main issues here is that sovereigns usually try to avoid the unavoidable. Once they have kind of ticked several boxes, you know that it's unavoidable. 
But despite that, due to political reasons, they try by all means to avoid the crisis. And by delaying facing the crisis, sometimes the crisis, when it hits, is much more severe. So that's what I'm referring to, how fast you approach the crisis, how you face the crisis. Clear examples, uh, and if you want, we can pick on Europe, but basically one example which is ideal or tailor-made for this is Uruguay. Argentina defaulted in 2001. Argentina was in a severe crisis. Argentina was prolonging this as much as they could. When they could not prolong it anymore, they announced the default. And then the solution came, they defaulted in December 2001. The solution came in 2005, which was the first exchange offer, then a second exchange offer in 2010. And now they are still in New York court dealing with this issue. That means we are talking about 12 years later. <coughs> Here, why? When they were facing this threat, because Hugo is kind of a satellite state of Argentina, uh, Uruguayans, please do not get offended with it, but it's a very small state that, that it's very related to the Argentine economy. And basically, Argentina went down, Argentina pulled down Uruguay, and as a result of that, Uruguay went immediately to the market and said, guys, uh, sorry, I cannot pay, I cannot afford my debts, uh, let's try to find a solution, let's try to f find a workable option. Uh, that's what they did, and the moment that they closed the exchange offer, in 30 days, they were having access to the capital markets. Argentina defaulted in 2001, and still we are in 2013, late 2013, and we still, uh, Argentina has still not been able to re-access the capital market. So that clearly shows, shows you what I, the point that I'm trying to make. Right. So, and, the, and now you remind me, that's, that's the last question, you remind me of this very famous um, advertisement in Argentina with the children in the kindergarten getting uh, a piece of paper with the word um, FMA, IMF, and you know, imagining that this is a helicopter, a UFO, imagining that it can be so a new fruit or whatever. And then the message, of course, the, the, the advertisement that was conveying is that we are generating the first, gener we are creating the first generation of uh, Argentinians who do not know what the IMF is. When would you, you know, when would you forecast this happening in Greece? What would be the first, you know, generation of children in the kindergarten in Greece not knowing what uh, the IMF is? I, as I told you, I, but I don't know, if, I think I, I mentioned it before, but if not just in case, I've been out of Argentina for the last 12 years, so I'm not sure I've seen the advertisement and I'm not sure whether I'm interpreting it correctly. Uh, if you refer to the fact that Argentina is not dependent on the IMF, uh, I'm, I'm not sure if, if that's the issue, because Argentina at some point, they decided to pay off the IMF. That, if you ask me, it's a big mistake, in, and Argentina is experiencing the problems today. One, they pay off the IMF, so basically they raise money through the capital markets, but not as I said before, this is domestically and basically was a private placement to Venezuela. So it's not that Argentina has access to the capital markets, it was a private placement to Venezuela, so basically the cousin, Hugo Chavez, at that time was financing Argentina. With the money Argentina raised, paid off the IMF. So basically they got off of the IMF as a creditor and they replaced one creditor with another. So they replaced the IMF at 3.5 with Venezuela at 6%. So that, of course, from a purely economic point of view, was a very bad transaction. From a political one, probably Argentina got rid of the IMF. The problem is that Argentina nowadays is cooking the numbers. Basically, inflation. There's an inflation that is reported somewhere between 25, 30, 30 plus percent, while Argentina is reporting something uh, around 8, 9 percent. The IMF is asking Argentina, please provide the right numbers. There has been an ongoing discussion between Argentina and the IMF, and they gave an ultimatum some time ago that basically Argentina needs to correct this because if not, they, they will apply some kind of sanctions. So. There's a fear that Argentina might become the next uh, international pariah, like those that are not members of the IMF. And why would I like a generation of kids without knowing what the IMF is? I personally think that the IMF plays a key role in international finance. Uh, I think that the IMF is, to us, is there to assist the, the countries, not only on technical aspects, on yearly revisions under Article 4. So it plays a very important role. Of course, I would like to see countries without owing money to the IMF because usually that's a result of either an economic imbalance or a natural disaster. So, of course, I would like to see countries without owing money to the IMF, but I would like to see countries in a very close relationship with the IMF. 
So that's why I'm not sure what the advertisement was about, but I would like to see a generation of kids growing, knowing very well what the IMF is, and basically not demonizing the IMF as it has been demonized in Argentina, or as I know it has been demonized in Greece as well. Thank you very, very much. Thank you.